Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. I want to talk to you about the next seven days because today, just think about this, today, March 25th, all the way to March 31st, if Jesus was living in this time and he were to relive everything all over again, this is considered as Passion Week, or it also means Holy Week. And so think about this. This was the week where Jesus was willingly and ready to give his life to sacrifice the agony of his passion on a cross so that you and I can have salvation. You know what? I love that we have all kinds of heroes on this earth, but there's only one Savior, and his name is Jesus. And that's what God wants to do this week with people. He wants us to be passionate. He wants us to be completely on fire. And let me talk to you guys real quick, because I know that some of us that have been walking with God for a minute, come on, you you know God. You know him real well. You love him. You pray to him. But you've stopped reaching out to people. It's kind of become just more of like, let me go to church. And, and we've replaced serving God in the church, right, with no longer reaching people with the love of Jesus Christ. It's so easy to get so comfortable where you're no longer winning people to Jesus. You're no longer reaching out to broken people. It's so easy for those who have been churched for so long to just get so comfortable. And then we just kind of get in the rhythm of just doing nothing. But the reality is this, is it's because of the passion of Jesus. It was because of the agony of that passion. If you read the story in Isaiah 53, just read everything that happened to him. He was stripped, ripped, cut, broken. You know, while we were in Mexico, uh, uh, John was building like a whole big old shelf thing. It was awesome. And uh, they were, I saw them carrying like wood. And I said, would you guys need some help? They're like, yeah, but it's like a few blocks away. And I'm like, I'll go with you. I'll help you guys carry wood. Oh, my God. I was carrying the wood. And they're like, are you okay? I'm like, yeah, I'm good. I was lying through my teeth. I was in pain. You know, <laughs> lifting these. I was lifting this wood. And, 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 you know, as I was walking, I was like, <sighs> I'm like, man, I'm out of shape. Help me, Jesus. But I started thinking. I'm not kidding. I started thinking, oh, my God, my Savior. He was ripped, broken, busted. And carrying uh, 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 his cross over 80 pounds for seven miles. And I'm thinking, I'm just walking two blocks. And I'm already exhausted. Man, and the worst cut I probably have is like maybe just like a little cut of my little, you know, finger there. And I just started thinking, my God, we, we really have to remember that, that this week is a week where we have to remember what Jesus did for us. He didn't only save us. He saved us to save other people as well. Amen? Amen. And so it's not good to stay comfortable. And, uh, and, and this is why we get to celebrate Easter because we are celebrating the fact that though Jesus Christ was on that cross and then placed inside of a tomb, on the third day he was raised from the dead. And God is going to raise all kinds of people's life from the dead like Star who was committing, trying to commit suicide three times, right? Who had someone who told her, her father told her, well, if you're going to do it, then do it right the first time. Let me tell you something. This is a place where God builds lives and that's what's going to happen on easter sunday but guess what it starts with you and me it starts with you and me look at your number and say it starts with you you. yeah amen look at this when you because because when you think about our our mission team they had to sacrifice their vacation their 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 finances because this this was not cheap this is a this is an expensive trip but they were willing to just do anything and everything, like we've been preaching on Nehemiah, right? I will build my house. Well, guess what? Nehemiah was rebuilding something that was going to rebuild lives. It wasn't just about the wall. It was about rebuilding the lives that lost everything. He was trying to give people a second chance. He was trying to bring people hope again. And so here in Nehemiah 2.18 is exactly what our mission team did. It's exactly what those people did yesterday when they went to the Valencia Mall. It says in in Nehemiah 2.18, so they said, everybody say, so they said. He says, let us rise up and build. Then they set their hands to do this what? It's good work. They set their hands to do this good work. And let me tell you something, this week, this video does not tell you everything we did. There's so much more we did. For example, we, we even did a two-night two night conference, okay, 
on how to overcome trauma. We had five different churches, five different senior pastors of the, the, the state of Oaxaca, okay, come into our church there in Oaxaca as we did the conference. Let me tell you something. There is so much division in Mexico. The last time that pastors came together was 20 years ago. 20 years and on those two nights, those pastors, because at first I'm like, I wonder how they're going to take this. Let's see how this is going to go. And praise God, they loved it so much. They came back the next day, and then another two pastors came. And I'm telling you, God is doing something right now, not only in Mexico, but God is doing something globally around the world. God is doing something in your life right now. But you have, to, you have to allow yourself to come to that place where you're saying, okay, God, I'm done being so inward focused. And I'm ready, Father God, to do whatever it is that you expect me and want me to do. And so when you read the story about Nehemiah and rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem, okay, God starts with rebuilding your life. That's where he starts. And if you haven't been here in the last few weeks, go back to the live stream, watch the message, and I started with you, right? Well, guess what? Once God, God builds your life back up again, now it's time to build other people's life up again. And when you read Nehemiah, it is a depiction of what Jesus Christ did for us, okay? We were broken and lost with sin. The walls of Jerusalem that were being rebuilt, those walls represent the soul, Right, And then you have the temple that was in the middle. We said that represents our heart, our life. And those walls that were ruined, that soul that was lost, man, Jesus was willing to give everything to rebuild your life so that we can be whole again. And that's exactly what Nehemiah was. He was like a depiction of Jesus in a way. Because think about it. It weighed on him to, to, to redeem the people from this broken situation. And we know the story where he goes to the king after he hears the story of all of the hurt, the pain. And the king says to him, what's wrong with you? And he begins to share with the king what was wrong. And then, of course, we know the end of the story. He goes and he rebuilds builds. Well, guess what? That's what God is doing on the earth right now. We need some Nehemiahs to, to rise up and get ready to build and not afraid to put their hands to work. And it's not just any work. It's good work. It's life-changing work. Amen? Amen? All right. So this Easter, everybody say this Easter. this Easter. Our theme is action. It's action. I mean, if we were to do like a, a Marvel uh, movie of Jesus, you want to talk about an action hero? Man, Jesus, I mean, there was everything in it, man. You had action. You had horror. I mean, what else? There was love. What other theme is there? There's horror, action, love. What else? There was, what else? Comedy. Yeah, there was some comedy in there, all right. <laughs> Judas. Yeah. What else? Suspense. Drama. The disciples were always drama. There was sci-fi. Okay, that works too. <laughs> so think about it. If, we were to, if, if you were to take the life of Jesus, let me tell you something. Yeah, there may be a lot of superheroes that we've watched and heard about, but let me tell you something. There's only one Savior, and he saved the whole world, literally. That's what our Jesus did for us. And so when you're thinking about, about you know, what us now, Jesus did this whole work. He went into action so that we can be a part of this whole, this whole movement that he started. And, and so the Apostle Paul begins to talk about just some very normal, average people. And, and, and he, Paul puts them in the, in the Bible because obviously there were some people that just couldn't get it. Just like so many of us in church, we just don't get it. We hear messages, and it's like in one ear, out the other, and we go right back to doing the same old thing. And it's sad because, you know what, there's a dying world. You don't need to go to a third world country once again to reach people. There are enough hurting and broken people where you work, where you live, where you eat. They're everywhere. They're all around us. And so Paul's saying this to them. Look what he says in Hebrews 11. It's amazing what he says. He says, do I need to give you more examples? So he's already talking and talking. He's like, all right, do I got to keep talking? Do I got to keep telling you? He's like, all right, let me throw out some names to you. And he says, I do not have time to tell you about Gideon, Barak, Samson, Jephthah, David, Samuel, and all the prophets. He says, through their faith. Through their what? Faith. Say it again. Through their what? Faith. Through their what? Faith. 
Through their faith, look at this, through their faith, how am I going to reach people? Through your faith. How am I going to share my story? Through your faith. How am I going to be able to be generous? Through your faith. Look, through their faith, they defeated kingdoms. Huh? This, this, is, a, this is a whole superhero story. If you really read the book of, of, of Hebrews, as a matter of fact, it's called the, the heroes of faith. It's what it's called. Hebrews is recognized as the heroes of faith. And it says, and through their faith, they defeated kingdoms. They did what was right. Come on, if you want to do right in life, you got to have faith to do right. They received God's promises, and they shut the mouths of lions, like our video. <laughs> that lion wouldn't keep his mouth shut, but man, I'll tell you, thank God for that gate. They stopped great fires. The walls, they stopped great fires. And were, and, and, and were safe from being killed with swords. Now look at this. They were weak and yet were made strong. They were powerful in battle and defeated, defeated other armies. Women, check this out, ladies. Here's where you come in. Women heroes. Women. Let me hear the women. Woo! Women received their dead relatives raised back to life. Come on, ladies. God wants to bring some resurrection power back to your family from the dead and it says others were tortured and refused to accept their freedom so they could be raised from the dead to a better life some were laughed at and beaten others were put in chains and thrown into prison they were stoned to death they were cut in half they were cut in half nobody's asking you to be cut in half Aren't you glad that they already did the cutting in half part for you? All God is asking you is, would you just share the love story? Would you just share the adventure story? Would you just share the horror that then has a love story right behind that horror? Would you just get up and begin to share what God has done for your life? These people refused. It gets better. It gets better. Look, it says... They were cut in half, and they were killed with swords. Some wore the skins of sheep, and some wore the skins of goats. In other words, you have the, the real believer, or the, let's call it the true believer, and then you got the make believer. Those are the two type of people in the church, true believers and make believers. Which one are you? All right, good deal. <laughs> Verse 38, the world was not good enough. For them, they wandered in deserts and mountains, living in caves and holes in the earth. And all these people are known for their, but none of them receive what God had promised them. Dang. In other words, these people lived a life of struggle, challenged, family problems, work problems, financial problems. But at no point of their walk with God, at no point of this relationship with Jesus, did they ever abandon their faith. In other words, it didn't matter if they were being threatened by being cut in half. They refused. They refused to ever deny their faith in Christ Jesus. And you know why they refused it? They said, man, well, we're better off. Even if you cut us in half, go ahead. Because our life is going to be better after this life. They forsook the world. They forsook everything. You know, and so many of us today in the church, and, and, and I'm going to make a point with this in a minute, okay? Stay with me. But so many of us in church today, we're just so comfortable, and the moment something happens, you know, you have a, a, a problem with your brother, your sister, your mother, your father, and we just lose all hope. Like, oh, my God. You wouldn't make it in the book of Hebrews. <laughs> you wouldn't make it. I mean, one little thing and we just like, well, God's not real. I'm not going to church anymore. And we just walk away. Or we just stop praying. You want to talk about heroes. It's people that are willing to live by faith. People that are willing to trust God when it doesn't look right. These people were living in holes. Okay? They're, they're, you, you, when I read stuff like that, I'm thinking, my God, you know, life's not that bad after all, right? And so, and to have this, this, this conviction and for them to have this passion, because it is Passion Week, right? These people, it was Passion Week every week, not just Easter weekend. But have you noticed that every single church in America, it packs out on Easter, and so do we. And guess what? The following weekend, it's back down to crickets again. You know why? 
Because there's no more anchor to the conviction that God's trying to bring in people's life. We unanchor our faith from the one who saved us. And then we're drifting away and then wondering, why is it, God? And every year you come back on Easter and you want to get it right only to go right back. Amen? See, don't send me on mission trips, man, because this is what happens. <laughs> it's work. It's sacrifice to go out of our way to reach people. Let's keep going. I got five minutes. You ready? Everybody say normal people. Did extraordinary things. That's what God does. With normal people, he did extraordinary acts. God wants to do extraordinary acts with ordinary people. That's what God wants to do. And so these were heroes of faith. Now let me, let me tell you this. To be a rebuilder of lives, you must have a few things out of Nehemiah. Number one, you have to have an outside focus. You have to have an outside focus. What do I mean by that? If you're always consumed with you guys, please listen to me. Hopefully you come to church because you're ready to grow and learn, okay? I'm not giving you my opinion, okay? Nehemiah shared the burden with others. It wasn't just like, oh, I got a call from heaven. It's all about me. No, he got a burden from heaven and saw all the ruins and the brokenness of people, and he began to share with other people like I'm sharing with you. And he began to speak to those people and say, hey, guess what? You know what? Here's the situation. They were cut to the heart. They said, okay, what do we got to do? They said, we got to build. And so they, they came out, out of being inward focused to being outside focused. They took their attention off of their issues, and they started putting the attention on the people that were hurting, and they said, let's do this. For example, when you think about the story of Nehemiah in chapter 1, when you were here a few weeks ago, we talked about how it all started. Uh, a few people came to visit Nehemiah where he worked at in the kingdom with, uh, with this king. And, 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 and as they were talking, here's the first thing Nehemiah did. He, he asked a simple question. He said, how are the people who have been exiled? Simple question. He didn't go all religious and spiritual, spooky. He just simple. How are the people doing that were exiled from the walls of Jerusalem, from the city of Jerusalem? And they began to share with him, and this happened, and that happened, and these family are hungry, and these people don't have a home. And you know what? The moment he heard this, he had a response. He wept. He cried. And we know the story. He goes, and he puts it all together, and they start building. I'm here to tell you the only way to have an outside focus is to ask simple questions to people this week. When you're with people, you simply approach them, and you just say things like this. Hey, how is your family doing? You'll be amazed how blessed people would be if you simply just ask a question like, how's your children? Or you approach someone that you work with and say, hey, I notice you've been sick lately. How's your health doing? How's, how's your marriage? How, how's, your, how's your sibling? You just ask simple things. Listen, my sister lives in Texas this morning. Before I came here, she just got put on my heart. And I text my sister. I say, hey, Leo, how you doing? How's, how's, how's Isaiah doing, my little nephew? How's he doing? Because she was going through a little struggle. Like, how are you doing? And she just, boom, blew me up. And like, like this whole little, like, you know, essay email. And uh, it was awesome. <laughs> but I read it. But it's amazing. What, what am I saying? I'm saying this. When, when, you, when you show compassion, when you show that you care about someone enough to ask and not be, not be this superficial person that says, how are you doing? Everything's awesome, awesome. That's fake. But to really have, like, if you're going to ask someone, how are you doing, you better make the time to hear the response because that response is going to bring them closer to Jesus through you. Come on, our job is to lead people to Jesus. Why? Because I'm passionate. This is Passion Week, March 25th through March 31st. The question is, what are you going to do? Number two, if you're going to be a Nehemiah builder of walls, you're going to have to have faith. Everybody say faith. Listen, without faith, you will always go back to your past. Without faith, you will always go back to your past. Say that with me. Without faith, I will go back to my past. You will go back to where God delivered you from. There is no other way. Hebrews eleven six 6 says this, but without faith, it's impossible to please God. So think about it. If you're just living for you, you've already abandoned faith. You've abandoned faith. Because if you're not in faith, you're in you. But when I'm in faith, I'm in him. 
And when I'm in him, then I please him. And he says, and he who comes to God must believe that he is God. And he is a rewarder to those who diligently seek him. So it takes faith. What do I mean by that? Well, check this out. One of the things about Nehemiah's story, being that he was a cupbearer for the king. Do you guys remember what a cupbearer does? What does a cupbearer do? He drink, he's the first sip, right, in case it's poison. And so if he falls, king's like, praise God. Not too good for Nehemiah, but let me tell you something. In the times of Nehemiah and, and serving kings, there was a kingdom law that as a cupbearer, you are forbidden to have any attitude or expression of sadness. If you were to show an expression of sadness, depression, they would literally kill you. That spirit, that attitude wasn't welcomed with kings. But it just so happened that, you know what, Nehemiah had so much faith that at that point he was so wrecked in God. He, he didn't care much about what the king, king was thinking. He cared more about what, what burden God was placing on his heart. His faith was so in God that he wasn't trying to look sad. It's just that God was doing something inside Nehemiah that he couldn't hold on. It wasn't really sadness per se. It was more of a, of a burden to do something about broken people. And the king says to him, what is wrong with you? I'm sure that would have been a scary moment. And you know what Nehemiah said? Here's the, here's the deal, king. All right, the walls of Jerusalem are burnt down. Man, the people, the, they're all exiled. They're broken. They're hurting. You know, king, I love serving you. I've been good to you. I'm sure he had to say something. And the king saw that that man had so much integrity and godly reputation that he was willing to do whatever it is that Nehemiah needed. You know what that king did for him? He paid the bill for him to go build that wall. You know what else he did? Nehemiah said, well, I also need some protection. You know what I'm saying? Because we're going to have some enemies trying to rebuild this thing. Any time that you decide to take your life and do something with God, there is always enemies that come with it. You have to accept that. If you don't accept the fact that once you serve God, there's an enemy, guess what? You're always going to push back. You're always going to abandon. And you won't be the person like the people of Hebrews 11 that refused we got to have a refuse spirit. I refuse to give up. I refuse to quit on God. I refuse to keep living for me. I refuse, no matter how hard it gets, no matter how difficult it gets, no matter what, what bad situation I'm in, I'm not going to stop serving God. I'm going to obey God in every season. That's hard to do, isn't it? But when you're passionate, people always tell me this, and I get annoyed sometimes, I'll be honest with you. I do. I'm just going to be like, Pastor, you do so much. Pastor, oh my God. You see, don't worry about me. I know who has me. I know where my strength comes from. I know what God has called me to do, and the only one who answers for that call is me. You, on the other hand, hopefully God is speaking something to you. So instead of worrying about me, why don't you put the focus on him and find out what does he want you to do? Because every single one of you have a God divine reason of being here. And, and let me tell you something. There's no time to waste. I believe in not wasting time. While I was there in Oaxaca, we were buying these little trinkets. One of them was like a, a, a chain with, with a watch. And they're like, why would you, why'd you, buy, why'd you buy that for? And I said, because I want to make sure that I wear this. And not forget every time I look at myself in the mirror and look at that watch and that chain, that my time is short. And I have no time to waste. And I only get one life, guys. And you only get one life as well. And you better use that, that life wisely. Because le let me tell you something. We're all going to stand before the one who saved us. You're all going to stand before your hero, Jesus, right? Who's your savior. And he's going to ask you, what did you do with the time I gave you? Huh? And some of us, we don't have to age 90. Some of us don't even have 80 or even 60. Why well, are you cursing us? No, that's reality. That's the world we live in. It's broken, it's hurting, there's sin in it, and there's all kinds of destruction. Do you think I ever expected to have Hodgkin's lymphoma inside my body? I never asked for it. I was serving God passionately, and even I got sick. Am I saying that's going to happen to you? No, I plead the blood of Jesus over your life, and I pray that you have long days with prosperity and blessing and amazing things as you serve the Lord. Amen? 
Because when you serve the Lord, he takes care of you. I had all that, but the Lord took care of me. I get to stand right here before you and tell you that he is faithful. Amen. When you build God's house, he builds your house. When you build God's house, he builds your house. And you either, listen, you either believe that or you don't. That's up to you. That's not a big, it's up to you. It's up to, according to your faith, so be it unto you. What are you building? Are you building you? Or are you building him? Are you making you famous? Or are you making him famous? There's only one who gets all the glory, and that's Jesus. That's Jesus. And so here you have Nehemiah. It took faith to respond, knowing that he can get killed. Listen, no one's asking you to go get cut in half. No one's asking you to go live in a hole. No one's even mistreating you. So what, it, what happened to the church of today? I wonder what the heroes of then would say if they would step foot in Elevate Church today. Would they feel like, wow, what happened to you guys? What is wrong with you? We died so that you can have this gospel. We were willing to bring this to you. We were willing to give up our families, our children, our careers, our life, so that you can have the freedom that we didn't have. That's passion week, isn't it? That's passion. That's holiness right there. Holiness, holiness is abandoning you to live for him. Holiness is be better today than you were yesterday. Holiness is be better tomorrow than you were today. That's holiness. Don't get me started now. Number three. We got to go. Ready? Number three. In order to be a faithful builder like Nehemiah, you have to have faithful actions without unwavering resolve. You have to have faithful actions without unwavering resolve. In other words, you know what, sometimes when you finally say, okay, pastor, I'm going to do this thing, and you get all into it, right? People do this all over churches, and then they, they're like, yeah, I'm going to do it. But then they start finding themselves in a challenging situation. You know, all of a sudden, they, they're making less money. It's, it's an enemy. Your car breaks down. And the first thing people think is this, and it's sad, but it's true. They think, wow, man. I thought when you serve God, you never deal with this stuff. So we start blaming it on God. Not realizing you got an enemy. Do you think the enemy wants you to build anything? Yes or no? Does the enemy want you to ever do anything for God with your life? Does, does God want to do something incredible in your life? Does the enemy want to do something amazing in your life? No. So what makes you think? At any point of walking with him, that things are going to be easy when you have an enemy. How does that work? I would say, man, if things are like, man, when we were there, we got sicker than a dog. Now, why it all happened? Well, I know it wasn't God. Obviously, he didn't put all these, you know, fevers and all this stuff on our bodies. But guess what? Man, we persevered. We kept our eyes on the prize, and we just kept going. We don't stop. It's called unwavering faith. I am unwavering in these faithful actions. If I said I'm going to serve God, then so be it. What if you treated your life like a mission trip every single week? No matter what, no matter what you're doing, I'm going to finish this. I'm going to finish this. Come on, it's not how you start. It's how you finish this. It's not how you start. Maybe some of you are a little wobbly. It's not how you started. How are you going to finish this life? And so here you have... You know, in Nehemiah, he's finally at the point of finishing this wall. Nehemiah 6, 1 through 4, and we end with this. It says, and when the word came to uh, the enemy, uh, Sanbel Sanbalat, Tobiah, uh, Jeshem, and, and, and the Arab, and the rest of our enemies. Look at this, and the rest of our enemies. In other words, these are just a few to just let you know right now. That I had rebuilt the wall and not, and look at this, and not a gap was left in it. Though... Up to that time, I had not set the doors in the gates, and Sanballat and Geshem sent me this message. Look at the message the enemy sent. Come, <laughs> let us meet together in one of the villages on the plain of Ono. Come on, it's either, that's either the plain of Ono or that's Oh No. <laughs> Everybody say that, Oh No. Oh, yeah, the enemy wants to bring you to Oh No. Oh, yeah, but look... <laughs> Look, 
but they were scheming to harm him. Let me tell you something. When you're focused on God things, don't, don't count it shocking when, when things come to distract you. L- look what it says. Verse 3, so I sent the messengers to them with this reply. I'm carrying on a great project and cannot come down right now. Why should I, look at this, why should I stop the work while I leave it and go down to be with you? And four times they sent me the same message, and each time I gave them the same message or the same answer. Let me tell you something. The moment you decide to get on God's project, come on, you're going to have letters from the enemy. Not once, not twice, not three, but four times, five times. And the enemy is always going to tell you to stop what you're doing. Why? The enemy does not want you to progress. The enemy wants you to digress. The enemy doesn't want you to grow spiritually. The enemy actually wants you to never read your Bible and let the pastor read it for you every single weekend. You can go, it's the truth. It's the truth. And we have to think, oh my God, it doesn't matter. When I choose to go into action for Christ, man, the enemy is going to try to get me off the project He's going he's gonna to try to get me distracted. Come on, what is pulling you away? What is calling you out of what God has called you to? Because anything you're going to do for God on this earth comes with enemies. It comes with it. But you have the power to respond and answer and say, hey, listen, uh, I'm busy right now. So when sickness comes like it did for us this week, I I just had to keep telling my body and the enemy, hey, listen, uh, body, you get lined up with God. Uh, Devil, not today, bro. I have a mission to finish here. Uh, and, And you just keep going. See, I could have easily just stopped and gone down to the level of the enemy and just been like, oh, my God, you're so right. Yeah, you should get some rest. I got nothing against rest, but I'm on mission. I'm on mission. What's your conviction? What's your conviction? Do you have a conviction? If we were to search your whole life, if God were to search your life right now, where is Jesus in it? In reaching people. Where is passion in the thread of your life? Is there any thread left? Because sometimes you can lose your thread. And when you lose your thread, man, you just start being consumed with you. Stop coming down to the level of the enemy. And stay focused on the project of the Father. And he said this, go ye into all the world and you preach this gospel. And go into all the nations. And you baptize them in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. This week, close your Bibles, close everything, let's get out of here. This week, this week, this week, Passion Week. We canceled Wednesday night service. There's no Wednesday night service. Why? Because we're going to have two Good Friday services. And then we're going to have four Sunday services, both completely different. Friday night, major amazing choir, communion. It's going to be great. I won't even preach the same message. I never do. I always preach two different messages. On Easter Sunday, it's going to be action. How sad would it be if we come to Easter just for us again while our family, our friends, our coworkers don't even know who Jesus is? How sad is that? We have to go into action. And all of you that have been safe for a minute, you've been coming for a while, you've been safe for a while, but you've kind of lost that passion, get your passion back. Get it back. Amen. You were just at the plane of oh no. So leave oh no, huh, and, and come up to, to God's mountain of but I'm here and let's do this. Let's reach people with the love of Jesus Christ. Amen. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below. And we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.